Okay, hi guys. Um, welcome to PVR twenty six zero two, um, which is the law of succession. Um, we're just gonna focus on assignment one, um, question one, um, the question that deals with um, interstate succession. Okay, so that's what we're gonna focus on. We're just gonna focus on question one. Remember, you guys are welcome to leave your comments, and I'm just gonna ask you guys to share this with your friends. Ask them to subscribe to the channel, so that you're ready. So that every time that we post something, the uh, you're the first people to see it, and uh, so that we can help each other along the way as we accomplish this very difficult, uh, difficult degree under these very crazy circumstances as well. So I'm just gonna get straight into it. Remember, um, we you guys to leave your comments tell us what you'd like us to post um tell us the sort of content that you'd like us to share with you guys okay um so remember the due date for this assignment is the 14th of may uh 2021 and also take very uh take note of this it's very important uh, submission of this uh, assignment is compulsory for admission to the examination okay um, and this assignment counts for 50 percent towards your semester mark and 10 percent towards your final mark for this module so what it means is um this this assignment counts for 50 percent uh, of what you're going to get uh for the for the for the assignment marks and then it counts towards uh 10 percent of your final mark uh for this module so we're just gonna uh, get straight into it and just um share with you guys um the sort of structure uh, that is expected uh the people that are going to mark this assignment how they expect you to present the answer because sometimes you know you actually know how to do the calculations how to come about it but you don't know how now to to sort of present your answer in a very logical and and, and presentable way okay so i'm not gonna read um the question i want to keep this video as short as possible um so that it doesn't get too long and too boring or too much for you guys to download or to go through uh, obviously because of data issues so i'm just gonna get straight into the answer here okay so wanda is entitled two hundred thousand accrual from javis estate um in terms of matrimonial property law so this amount is added to estate so it's five hundred thousand uh, plus hundred thousand and we get a total of six hundred thousand okay so it's important to note at this point that the total amount of wanda's estate is six hundred thousand and it devolves in terms of interstate succession because obviously wanda died without leaving a will okay so xavier is entitled to inherit um, a child's portion or the statutory amount uh, which is two hundred fifty thousand. so xavier either inherits uh, a child's portion or the statutory amount of two hundred fifty thousand, whichever amount is greater so in other words xavier inherits the greater amount if the child's portion after we do the calculations if you see that the child's portion is worth more than the statutory amount of two hundred fifty thousand, he gets that but if you do find that the statutory amount is higher he gets the statutory amounts okay so uh, okay so before we, we we get into that i just want to point out that with this sort of question because these people are married out of community of property you're not going to to do that whole division thing at the start where you say uh, we divide the the estate by two because this is the mistake that a lot of people make and once you do that you're obviously going to get zero for this question because you you don't know how to go about it so that's just the a very important thing to just start off with there okay so now uh, we move on to how we're going to calculate um the child's portion so a child's portion is calculated by dividing the value the the total value of the estate by the number of children who have either one survived the deceased or two children who have predeceased the deceased but are survived by descendants plus three the number of spouses in this case we only have one spouse which is javier so um we're going to divide uh, so in order to get the um, the value of the child's portion we're going to divide uh, the total value for for estate which is six hundred thousand by five okay so the five are ben francis celeste yvette and javier 
So when you do that, if you divide 600,000 by five, you get 120,000, okay? Uh, so it's important at this point to note as well that although France has repudiated, uh, which is refused uh, to inherit, she still has to be counted for the purposes of calculating or for the purposes of determining the child's share. So don't make that mistake again of excluding Francis because she has uh, repudiated the, the inheritance. You only add her for the purposes of calculating um, of, or determining the child's portion. Okay, So since um, the child's portion, as we have seen, since it's less than the statutory amount of 250000 what it means is that Javier inherits um, the statutory amount of 250,000 because it is higher um, than the child's portion. So this is what it means. So what it means is that the remaining 350,000, which we get by subtracting 250,000, which Javier inherits from the total amount or the total value of the estate, which is 600,000, is then divided equally uh, between the children, which is Ben, Francis, and Celeste. This amount of money is called the residue. The amount of money that we left with when we um, when we remove um, the either the child's portion or the statutory amounts which we've done in this case, okay. So what it means is that uh, the remaining two hundred fifty thousand, sorry, the remaining three hundred fifty thousand after we subtracted two hundred fifty thousand from six hundred thousand, what we get is divided equally uh, between the children, which is Ben, Francis, and Celeste. Okay, so um, uh, I know you already have questions on Celeste because Celeste uh, predeceased um, Wanda. We're going to get into that and explain what happens with that amount. We we'll also explain what happens with um, the repudiated uh, inheritance, which has been refused by Francis. Okay, so Ben, we inherit eight hundred. Eight, sorry, Ben, we inherit eighty-seven thousand five hundred. Um, take note of that. And then, since Francis refuses to inherit um, his share of eighty-seven thousand five hundred, who go to Xavier in terms of section 1.6 this is very important this is another point that that has caused a lot of confusion so take note of this as well uh, Francis refuses to inherit so a share of 87,500 rand who go to Xavier in terms of section 1.6 of the interstate succession act which provides that if a descendant fails to inherit the share goes to the spouse okay now because Celeste uh, predeceased Wanda a share of 87,500 rand who go to her daughter, Dina, by way of representation. It's also important that you highlight this uh, by way of representation, okay? Uh, that's why I've actually put it in pink there to sort of highlight it, uh, that you have to, you, you definitely have to state that Dina inherits um, the share that her mother was supposed to get of 87,500 rand by way of representation. Okay, so Yvette will inherit 87,500. And then Gerald, okay, so remember this question said that um, we specify those that don't inherit as well and we give reasons why. Okay, so Gerald has been mentioned there in the question, but Gerald, uh, who is the son of Francis, does not inherit anything. Um, a lot of people um, have been asking me uh, whether or not um, fr uh, Gerald should not inherit uh, the inheritance that her mother Francis appreciated. A lot of people have been asking me that, but the question is no. The answer, sorry, is no. He does not inherit uh, simply because uh, her mother's repudiated. She goes to Xavier. Um, there's a part in this, which is section 1.7 of, of the Act. Uh, remember that section is subject to section 1.6, which talks, which says that um, a share that is repudiated uh, by a descendant goes to the spouse. But in the event that uh, this is just a hypothetical, in the event that uh, perhaps Wanda or Xavier had died before Wanda, and Wanda, when she died, left no spouse, then Gerald would inherit this. But in this case, because Xavier, the spouse, of Wanda is alive, uh, the repudiated estate of Francis uh, goes to, to Xavier, okay? So Gerard does not get anything. And then Mary as well uh, is an ascendant and will not inherit because they are closer relatives who exclude her. Remember, when, when you look at this, you have to understand uh, when an ascendant gets anything or how that happens. But because there are relatives here that exclude Mary, she's not going to inherit anything as well. So 
I try to keep this short. Um, I try to keep it uh, nice and short. Uh, if there are questions, remember you're, you're free to contact us on our details that are on the other videos. I'm not gonna post them on this one, but you're also free to to to, to leave um, your your comments or your questions in the comment section. We will respond to those questions um, as soon as possible. So thank you for listening. Um, remember, questions and contributions are welcome any time of the day. Thank you.